Hey there, what do you think that all these tools have in common? That they are gonna be eaten by Notion. And this is what I'm gonna show you in this video. Notion has just released Notion Forms. I don't know about you, but I've been my whole life using all these uh, different tools for having forms and then having automations uh, to bring all that data inside of Notion. Now we will be able to do that natively. So chances are that you're no longer going to need some of the tools that you were needing before. And if you were paying a subscription for some of them, maybe you're going to save that. So in this video, we are going to show how to create these forms, how to use them, what features they have, use cases, everything that you need to know about Notion forms. Let's get into it. Okay, so you already know that Notion has databases. So the purpose of these forms is to introduce data inside of those databases. So this means that we are going to need a database for every form that we have. Now, there are two differentiated ways that we can create forms. One is creating a form from scratch, which will also create a database to hold the data that we put inside of the form. And another one is to create forms for databases that already exist, which is probably the use case that you're most interested about. So first, let's see how to create a form, which is also going to create a database. So here we will write slash form and that is it. Here we have our first form. As you can see here, there is this view called responses. So this is the actual database itself. So this is just a, a database, new database test. And this is the form that is attached to it. Here we can give the form a title and all the different questions that we will get into them a little bit, a little bit farther in the video. So now how to create forms for databases that already exist. So for this, we will have to go to the core database. If this will not work in any linked view of database. We'll have to go to the actual database. So for example, right now I'm in the, in my tasks database. And here, if we hit the plus icon, we have the form. And here, this is asking us if we want to create X number of questions, because these are the number of properties that I have inside of my database. Or we can decide to start from scratch. I mean, probably this is a little bit crazy because not a lot of properties I want to use. So I'm just going to start from scratch. And now whatever we input in this form is going to get also inputted inside of our tasks database. Okay, so now we have just covered how to create them. Let's see now how to customize them before we jump into the use cases. So here we can see that we have an options button over here and we can make things required, which is gonna be very useful for one of the use cases that I'm gonna show you later. Here we also have a place for adding a description and whether this, if, if this is a text property, whether we want a long answer or not. Here we are seeing which property is linked to this question inside of the form. And if you want to see the property, this is the one. And now we can sync this with the, with the property name. Okay, so now how to create more questions. So here we can link a new question to existing properties or we can create a new property. So if we click any of these, we will create a new property in the, in the database. And here we can see all the different properties that we have. Now, what other options do we have? We can go here to the three dots and we can customize the form. So here, what are the things that we can customize? The color of the submit button, the submit button itself, enter new task, for example, the confirmation title. Yay, you've created a new task and the confirmation body. You're the best. And we can even mention a page if we if we want. You're the best, now go here to do X, Y, Z. Okay, and that is it. So now, how we can see how the form is going to look on the preview, enter new task, yay, and view my response, blah, blah, blah. Okay, cool. So now, how can I preview uh, how my form is going to look like? Well, there is a preview button. Uh, so we click here, we add whatever, enter new task. And one thing that is interesting is that here there is a button that says view my response. So this is very useful if you want to go to your entry and modify something. Maybe you mess something up, whatever, or you want to delete it, up to you. But yes, if we click here, we go to the entry that we have just created. Now, there is another thing that we can change, which is in this button over here in the share form button here who can fill out it can be everybody inside of my workspace everybody on the web or nobody 
okay? So for internal things such as creating tasks, creating clients or whatever, and this is the one that we will use. If we want to allow people outside of our workspace to add information into our databases, this is the one that we want to use. And these people do not need to have access to the database itself, of course. So this is the first time that natively we can allow people from outside our Notion workspace to interact with our databases inside of Notion. And finally, this is the link that we'll be sharing to everybody who wanna input information in, in the form. Okay, so let's create our first form and then let's see how we can embed it in different ways, in different places, so this form becomes very useful. So this is a, a task. So what I want is to be able to write which is the due date, which is this one, who is the assignee, if there is an SOP. And look, you can see that this is a relation property. So forms can work also with relation properties. Now, what else do we need? If it's part of a project, we also want it. And I would say that is it. Well, if it's related to a client as well. One very good thing that we can do is to make things required. So this is going to help us a ton in standardizing the way that we input information inside of our system. This is something that I've been trying to solve in Notion since I'm using this tool for over four years and there was no really a way to force people to feel certain data whenever they uh, input information. Now we have it. For example, the typical use case that always happens is that, that people used to create tasks with no assignee and that resulted on that task getting lost or we needed to create a view with all the unassigned tasks, blah, blah, blah. But now we can set this as required and we are gonna make sure that there is also a task description. And here in the description, we can also add how we want the person to add it. Add excruciating detail. Okay, and what do we have left? The form title. Create a new task. Cool. So how do we actually use this form and make it visible for everybody in my team, for example? What we are going to need is this link. Okay, so we are going to copy it. And now we can go to any dashboard or something. So maybe here, personal dashboards. Here is the people from my team. So I can come here, paste the link and click on embed. And there we have it, okay? And that is it, the form is, is ready. So new task, the due date is today, assignee is myself, the SOPs. Here you can see all the, all the different SOPs. The project is whatever, the client is whoever, and enter new task. And that is it. With my thank you page, view my response, and now I can delete it because this is a fake task. So there is another way that we can invoke forms, which I personally prefer. Because I don't know about you, but this takes a lot of space and I cannot make it smaller. So instead of doing this, what we can do is delete this guy and we can create a button. We can call the button create new task. And when the button is clicked, the action that we want is to open page or URL, click here, paste the form, and we can open it in SiteBeak. Done. So now whenever we click here, boom, we have the form over here, which I think is so much more useful. So how else could we use forms? Well, we can use it with our clients, for example. We can use them to intake information. And even if we go a step further, since every form entry is going to create a new record inside of a database, we could trigger an automation in Zapier that sends whoever submitted the form an email. So this could be an onboarding form for your service and then you can send your client a welcome email. So I am so excited about this new feature because it will allow, for example, our team members that don't know so much about Notion and that may get lost to input information in the way that they are needed. Because now I'm imagining the situation in which you are working with contractors and you need them to create tasks and, and so on, but they don't really know Notion. So now you will just give them a form and that's it with all the required fields and you are good to go. You can be sure that they are gonna fill the data that they need to. Now, there are some things that Notion Forms cannot do and that other tools such as Typeform or Tally can, which are, for example, you cannot customize the way it looks. So it just looks how you saw it and that's about it. Second, there is no logic. So in some other tools like Typeform, if the person that is submitting the form 
answers A in one question, then the next question can be one. But if he answered B, the next question can be a different one. This does not exist in Notion. For the time being, you cannot also pre-fill certain fields because I know that tools such as Tally or Typeform, if you add a certain thing in the form URL, you're going to pre-fill some of the data. This is not possible in Notion. So Notion Forms is a very simple form solution that is linked to a Notion database, but I am afraid that it will not be able to completely substitute other more dedicated form tools if you need any of these more advanced features. But I believe that for most cases, Notion Forms is gonna be more than enough and probably they will allow you to stop using any of those extra form tools. Oh, and by the way, I run a community of business owners that want to systemize and automate their businesses inside of Notion. And inside of it, all of us follow the same process that I follow with every one of the clients that I help build these processes. So you can check more information in the description of this video. And well, that is it for this video, guys. And as always, hasta la próxima.